Open to Colossians chapter 1, verse 3. Colossians chapter 1, verse 3. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. I woke up this morning with the thought on my mind. Uh, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. This morning I want to uh, share a message with you called, You Can't Be This and Get That. Everybody say, you can't be this and get that. Say it again. You can't be this and get that. Boy, I could go a lot of directions with this one thought right here that you can't be this and, and get that. But it's important. For, and, you know, we are in a political season right now. Let me just say you can't be uh, for certain things and get that. So you got to make up your mind what you're for. Amen. And once you do that, and again, I, I'm very strong pro-life, so I just vote that way and have for years. Well, for 40 years, so I've already went and voted. If you haven't, make sure you get out on Tuesday and get that done. It's important for your sanity, amen. It gives you a reason not to complain the rest of the year. Because if you ain't voted, then you just got to shut up. Can I get an amen? So you can't, you can't be this and get that. What, what are you saying, Pastor? What I'm saying is, is you can't be bitter and be appreciated. You can't be bitter and be thankful. I've never met somebody that was bitter that was thankful. But I've always met people that were thankful that were no longer bitter. Amen. This is a very important message this morning. And, and as I work through it, you might even want to come to the second service to see how much I learned between here and there. Because I always rethink stuff as I'm traveling. And I talk with my mom. She'll say, what do you, she'll tell me, she'll say, Jerry, what are you thinking about? I said, Mom, think about what I should have said when I was in the first service. Amen. It's always a joy to get two services for me. I get to work some things out, and oftentimes it's better here, and I'm mad out there because I forgot what I said here. I don't know if you've ever forgotten in 30 minutes what you said, but I've been accused of it a whole bunch in my life. Amen. So, appreciated people, and I want to tell you, last week I talked to you about I appreciate you, and I do appreciate you. I appreciate everything about this house, the people of this church, the relationships I have. Amen. Uh, they, they're, they're a beautiful thing. I, I talked about divine uh, appointments last week, and, and when God brings people together, uh, I see uh, J.D. is here, and uh, Jessica, and I just want to mention this. I got a phone call this week from a friend of mine who came watch some games with me last night named Chris Berryford. Now, Chris and I have worked out together. We've traveled together, done some things, and uh, he's a, a personal trainer. And he calls me, and he says, hey, man, you don't believe this, but me and Roxanne were looking for land. And then he goes to the other campus looking for land. And I heard Jessica, your daddy, in the background and found out they were up there at his place, didn't know it was his place, saw the uh, little country church stick on the back of the car, and then they said, hey, you know Pastor Jerry? And he said, do I know Pastor Jerry? Even I've traveled the world with that man, and now he's wanting to buy your daddy's land. And it looks like it's coming together, and they sign a contract. And I love when people just show up, and it's just divinely put together. Amen? It's just a good thing. And it just blessed me to know that that land is still going to be a part of my life where I can go up and deer hunt. He's a good God. Can I get an amen? Appreciated people, and I just want to tell you now, appreciated people exchange bitterness for thankfulness. That's what they do. They were once in, in bitterness in life, and then all of a sudden they become thankful. And just the word thanksgiving to me prompts the spirit of humility. Genuine gratitude produces thankfulness. When you are really appreciative of other people, it brings thankfulness in your life. And thankfulness to God for His mercy, His abundance, amen, His protection, His smile of favor. Every now and then I just know God's smiling down on me. He's smiling on you. You can sense, you can sense a smile. You ever just sense somebody smiling behind you? Amen, I have. And that's how I feel about God. Life simplifies itself when you're thankful. When you're not thankful, it gets complicated. But when you're thankful about the little things in life, it begins to simplify itself. You know, two people can do something, and one is doing it with an attitude of performing. They're just performing. And the other is doing it for the attitude of serving. We're going to talk about the difference of that in a minute. And the motives are extremely different. Appreciated people will exchange bitterness for thankfulness. Now, if you feel unappreciated, listen to me. If you feel unappreciated, you'll end up becoming bitter. If you don't feel like your spouse appreciates you, your company appreciates you, if you don't feel like the people around you, your parents appreciate you, amen, and vice versa, you don't appreciate your parents, it will bring bitterness into your life. So what I would say is whether they appreciate me or not, I'm always telling them I appreciate them. 
Amen. I will reverse that. I don't need your approval, amen, for me to appreciate you. Can I get amen? So bitterness is for us a deep rut in our soul. We can get bitter quick. Amen. It happens quick. You can be as good on a Sunday, and by Monday, like a car that was out of alignment, that just drifted that direction, your soul is like that. We can go to bitterness easily if we feel hurt, if we feel taken advantage of, if we feel unappreciated. Appreciated people exchange performing for serving, and this is important. A lot of folk, that, that the reason they're bitter is they've been performing, and nobody appreciated their performance. But if you're serving, you don't care what people think about what you just did. Amen, because you're serving. When people don't know that they're appreciated, again, they got to brag about what they've done. Now, I'm going to get a little transparent with you, just a little. All right? And, and just hear me. Well, it's about what they, they have to exaggerate what they've done. They, they need to tell everybody what they have done. You say, Pastor Jerry, how do you know that? Because that's what I've done. Uh-huh. That, that's one of my sins. Can I admit that to you? But there are times that, that in life you don't feel appreciated, so you just start bragging. The book of Colossians, we're there in chapter 1, verse 3. If you haven't found it by now, you're not going to. Tells us, we always thank God the Father of our Lord Jesus. Paul the Apostle, a very important figure I'm going to talk about today. He says, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all God's people. The faith and love that spring from the hope stored up for you in heaven and about which you have already heard. The true message of the gospel. That has come to you in the same way the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world. Just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and truly understood God's grace. In other words, the day you got saved. So Paul saying, I want to thank God for you and I want to tell you I'll pray for you. Last week I started a message out of the book of Philippians where Paul said, I th I'm thankful for you. He says it in the book of Ephesians, I'm thankful for you. In Galatians, I'm thankful for you. So I started picking up on what Paul was saying and what he was really saying is I appreciate you. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate everything you do. When I read about Paul, and I'm like, man, <laughs> if I did some of the stuff that Paul did, if I could have pulled off some of that, I'd definitely put it on my wall. It would be on my post on Facebook and Instagram. I would let everybody know, you know, like, dear universe, today I, con uh, I converted a whole city. Amen. Today I was in a shipwreck, and I told a bunch of boys that if you stick with me, boys, we're all going to be all right. And 276 men. God, I saved 276 men today. And by the way, when I got on that island in Acts 28, a snake bit me, and I threw it off. As, it threw, as a matter of fact, as I was throwing it, I took a selfie of me so I could post it for the world to see. Then I was told, my good, look, look what you just did, man. Now, we, my, my, my daddy's dying. The governor of the island of Melita said, my dad is dying. Would you do so? I went over and laid my hands on him and raised him up from the dead. Oh, if I'd have only done what Paul done, I would have a whole new ministry. I would have boasted about it. I would have proclaimed it. I would have shared it over and over. Every time I got with other people, I would have said it to them. See, the issue here, church, is appreciated people exchange performing for serving. And Paul was not about performing. He was just walking through life, and this is what happened to him over and over. Two people can be very ambitious and very fruitful, and their attitudes can be very different. I'll say it this way. Knowing God appreciates us allows us to exchange our performance for service. Knowing God appreciates us. You need to understand that God appreciates you. And he sees you when nobody else sees you. And when there's not a crowd there for you to perform in front of, don't you worry about that. Our audience is the one. And when you start understanding this, and I had to get this, I had to get hold of this because I've been a very successful man in life, at times maybe too successful. Some people say, well, and you know, things you've done really grown. Just think, just because something grows fast don't mean it's healthy. Cancer grows faster than muscle. Amen. So beware of that. It's okay to grow a little bit slower. So, so when I walk through it, I'm going to throw some things at, at, up here for you to notice. Amen. Performance is done for the sight and approval of others. Service is done knowing that God is watching and approving whether or not anybody else is. Jesus often talked about not let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. He talked about if nobody saw you, that's okay. But, we, but what happens is, and here's the thing, you've got to start seeing God bigger than the people around you you got to see God bigger than the audiences you have. 
Amen. And the family that's watching you. You just got to do sometimes, you know, and I've heard, uh, particularly this time of year, Thanksgiving, I've heard sweet mamas and, and ladies say, I slaved over this meal for six hours. I put that turkey in there. I, 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 I crushed the cranberries myself. Amen. I, I, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, I've taken care of the sauce. I've got the rolls in. I rolled the yeast rolls myself. Amen. I did all that. Ten minutes. It's gone and ain't nobody said thank you. Sometimes, Mama, you got to back up and say, you know what, God, I'm doing all this for you just to bless my family. Amen, I'm doing it all for you. Let's keep going here. Performance calls us to be enslaved to others' opinions. Unable to say no. And we're prone to be overworked because we're trying to do it for other people. We're trying to, you know, and as a pastor, man, I remember I wore myself out for years trying to do things for other people, everything they asked me to. But here, service frees us to do what God wants, thereby saying no is needed. It's okay to say no. Everybody say no. Say it again. It's the first word you learn. It's the first word you learn. I've never seen a baby say yes. The first word that baby learns is no. And you never forget it until sometimes you start performing for people and they ask you to do stuff over and over. And some of you are enslaved by family and certain friends that are constantly pulling on you. And because of that, you don't say no to them. My, listen, it's because you think you're doing God a, a, a favor. Every now and then I got to back off and say, you know what I need to do? I need to remind myself whose I am. Amen. And I have, if I have to say no to this moment, then I will do that. Performance causes us to focus on the big things. What's the big thing? What's the next big thing? Amen. And only do what is highly visible and significant. Service allows us to do simple, humble, menial tasks. The quote, little things, knowing that the the peasant Jesus, the carpenter we worship, equally appreciates them both. When you get it in your head that he appreciates you for the little things you do, amen, that nobody else saw, hallelujah. That, that's important. Can I get an amen? Amen. That, that's so part. Performing is where people are an audience and you want their praise. Serving is where God is the audience. It doesn't matter if people see it. It doesn't matter if people know. Now, we live now. What's happened is the magnification of social media has pushed everything forward. I was talking to my pastor this morning. I said, I've fallen into this trap at times. I want people outside the, the church world to know what we're doing. So I will post things and I will say things, but I've got to be careful and make sure that God gets the glory for everything that we do. Can I get an amen? It's so important because what's happened is, is I, I see it every week. Certain churches pass, they, they, they post and pat people at the altar, packed at the altar. Look what church we had. And I looked at it closely. It's the same people every week. It looked like the same picture every week. After a while, I got to back away and say, God, you know what? Do you be the glory for what happens in a little country church? For the little things that took place up here today during the prayer time. Amen. What's taking place back there with our kids that we may not see, but it's building their lives in God. Can I get an amen? Amen. And if it's performing, it's not enough because the audience will never be big enough. If you perform, it's never big enough. You want more. You got to have bigger. Amen. There's got to be something else there. But if it's serving, hmm, it's enough because the audience is just one. It's just one. You see the difference. It changes things. And what it means is, friends, we, we could stop using people for our praise and we could start loving people for his praise. Amen. I'm doing this, God, because I love you. It's just personally, it convicts me again when I read about Paul the Apostle. I mean, uh, it, it, what he is, he's always serving. He's always, he, he's in prison. He's serving his church. Even when he was in Rome, in a prison in Rome, the Bible speaks of the guards coming in and taking care of him, that they posted guards. And every time guards came in, he'd say, I greet you in the name of Jesus. And he would mention the guard. In other words, he didn't take a day off in jail. He was still winning people to Jesus in jail. He didn't just shut down. And he goes on and he talks, being in prison, and he says, he says that elsewhere, it's to the Corinthians, he says that his resume was, and he says, I've been beaten, I've been shipwrecked, I've been homeless, I've been left for dead, adrift in open sea, i got 39 lashes. Uh, and then he goes on to say this one little line. In addition to all that, I have constant concern for the churches. Let me tell you, when I'm bobbing up and down in the water, I'm thinking about the churches. When it's slapping me on the back with a whip, I'm thinking about the churches. When I'm in prison, I'm singing with Silas in the bottom of the jail, I'm thinking about the churches. 
Everything inside me is the churches. The church of God is so important. And many people, they throw it away. They'd rather be outside. But I'm telling you, being in this house with one another, and I use the word organic, we, we get to know each other. We get to fellowship with one another. We get to hunt together, watch sports together. We get to fellowship with our kids. Amen. All these things are so important in the church. He said, so I, I'm always thinking about the church. Second Corinthians 11, 27, I'll tell you, he said, I've labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have gone without food. I've been cold, naked, besides everything else. I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. Why? Uh, why? Who is weak? I do not feel weak. Who is led into sin? And I do not inwardly burn. He's admitting the truth about himself. And I think it's so important at times that, now listen to me, there are certain, certain things you should never admit to anybody. You talk to God. Because people got this issue, gossip. They can't help themselves. It's just like if they know something about you, they got to say it to somebody else. Amen. So don't talk to them. Tell God. But then there are things that are very honest that we can say to one another about our lives to try to help somebody else. Can I get an amen? Yeah, you can see two people doing the same thing, and God sees the heart and sees that there are very different motives between serving and performing. When God looked at King David, he said, I saw his heart. It was his heart that made him different. Yeah, he was a, he, he was a sinful man. He was a violent man. He was a man who would, who, who would take you out, man. He had men that hung out with him who were also of the same way, but there was something about his heart. He had a heart after me. His heart loved me. His heart sang to me. His heart wrote psalms to me. There was something about it. He struggled in life with his flesh, but yet his heart was after me. And I read that and I realize that God sees your heart and he appreciates you. He appreciates you. Now listen, appreciating people exchange boasting, boasting, for encouraging. There's some things I've had to do in life. I had to quit talking about me and start encouraging other people. I am a, a, a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, uh, no, quit trying to think for me. I love little churches. I've always encouraged the little church pastor. There's something because, because they, they see themselves often as the little guys, and they see the other churches really blowing and going. I've been blowing and going, and, and I, love, I love our churches. I believe we've got a great size churches in both of our places. But the bottom line is, is we don't represent what the churches are in America. Seventy percent of the churches in America are twice as small as us. So I'm always encouraging the, the smaller church pastor. I'm always believing in them, amen, and pulling for them, giving them any advice, any way I can help them. But I had to learn that. You see, church, uh, I have two things I wrote down at times when I don't always feel appreciated, these are some of the things that I've done in life. One is I obsess about making known everything that I do. Do you know anyone like that? That just want to make sure that you know everything they do? You know what I did today? I went out and did this, this, and this. And you say, you come to me and you tell me, well, you know, Pastor, I led three people to Jesus this week. And I go, yeah, I did six. I get that message from Pastor. How was church today? And they'll tell me how theirs was. And I go, well, you know, ours was better. Ours was better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't believe what happened today in church. Oh, yeah, man, we saw folk raised from the dead. Yeah, they were Baptists. Uh huh. Can you hear what I'm saying? But I'm working on it. Everybody say, I'm working on it. See, you got to be careful with it because if you're not careful, you begin to boast and let everybody know everything you do. I, I got to make sure that God knows that I'm doing stuff without me having to boast about it. Can I get an amen? Amen. And I've learned. I don't use the word busy. I, I started using the word effective because I re for years I was always talking about being busy. I'm busy. Everybody come because, well, I know you're busy. Oh, yeah, I'm busy. Oh, I'm busy. I'm doing this and that and hospitals and funerals and weddings and this and that. And, and, you know, and I barely have time to study to preach on what's most important. That's on Sunday. I just I got to deal with it. I got five kids and I got three dogs. And, yeah, I'm busy. And we talk about being busy. Busy, busy, busy is just a word for covering up your ineffectiveness. Because we could be a lot more effective if we weren't busy. Well, if you just get things done that you know you need to get done that day. Can I get an amen? Just want to get that done. So now I've, I've, I've changed a lot. Now here's the second thing. I've always done this, and it's been an issue in my life, a sin in my life. I, I, I exaggerate. I know you don't, but I do. I have exaggerated, Kenny, in life. Uh, we took a motorcycle trip a while back. Do you know how far it was? 
It was about uh, 2,400, 2,500 miles, something all right. I called it 26. I rounded up. I always round up. I've always rounded up. I'm my whole life, I've rounded up. If, if, I, if somebody, uh, if I, if I got, it was giving them an offering and it, it stopped at, at, say, 52, I'm going to give them the 100. I've always rounded up. I've always had this issue with exaggerating. And then I began to understand that there was an English word that would help me out. It's called hyperbole. Hyperbole is an English word that means to exaggerate for effect. And I realized that good preaching is always hyperbole in. Can I get an amen? Always, Keith, don't look at me like you ain't never done this. Amen. Well, but we all do. We get exaggerated. We, we go back over our childhood and we, we talk about how great it was and what we did. But, but the bottom line was uh, <laughs> we exaggerate just a little bit to make it a little better than what it was. So I have to back away just a little bit and say, God, now you've got to help this preacher because I want to appreciate people and I don't want to get caught up on everything being about me. Can I get an amen? I, I want you to be very encouraged. I want you to, to appreciate who Jesus is and what he's done for you and what he's doing for you. See, the issue is now me and him and what, what he's doing in our life. And I want you to know that the Lord Jesus appreciates you. If you have served, Jesus says thank you. If you've given, he says thank you. If you've prayed, if you're growing, he says thank you. And he wants to free you from the performance trap and to let you know that you can enjoy serving people like he did. He just served them. You know, no one got more done than Jesus, but it was not not performance it was service he got up the bible says in john 13 verse 4 so he got up from the meal talking about the passover with the disciples all sitting around him he took off his outer clothing wrapped a towel around his waist after that he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples feet drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him and you know the story they, they looked at him and peter said don't you wash my feet don't you there's an arrogance but see I, me and pete a lot of light amen and because of that he's like don't wash my feet you know you don't have to do that for me my feet are good and jesus said if i don't wash feet you don't have no part with me you can't even hang out with me unless you let me serve you see sometimes we there's an arrogance that comes over us, a pride that comes over we don't want nobody else to serve us i i believe this church has always been made up of servants and what made the, the little country church so popular and so strong is the fact that you guys don't mind serving one another. Amen. You'll serve in the kitchen. You'll open the door. You'll park in the parking lot. Amen. You do whatever it takes to serve. And as long as we're serving, we're pleasing Jesus. But whenever we start performing, now that becomes fleshly. And that's not going to be good. See, I struggle. I struggle with today's churches of, of lights flashing and smoke coming out and, and pretty backgrounds and all that. And I, I've even discussed it with Pastor Joseph. Do you know, that? You, should we change the background? Should, should we, you know, it's better for the TV. Hello. And I think of that because we, we look, I'll be honest with you, just a tad old-fashioned. But it's who we are. It's who I am. So, so I sat back and I asked myself about a lot of these questions, and then I realized, God, if I preached outside and the background was the woods, and I did it for you, it'd be okay. I think of times we've had church in so many different places and parking lots and under a little lamp out at the ranch, and, and uh, you know, the power goes off, and we're out on the porch or, or sitting in the sweaty tabernacle. You know, it, we, we've done church out here in this arena. I've done churches, it, 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 and it didn't matter. Amen. Just as long as Jesus was the center. Can I get an amen? So if I can give you some deposits through appreciation, what happens when you appreciate people? It's not hard. If, if there's one thing that's changed in my life over the last 20 years is I appreciate you. Because, Kenny, what happened in life is for me is I, I, I forgot what got me where I was. And it was people. And when you start appreciating the little things and people come along beside you, and you tell your kids you appreciate them. And kids, you tell your parents you appreciate them. And we start appreciating one another. All of a sudden, everything changes. But I can tell you, you can't be this and get that. You can't be bitter and mean and get love and appreciation. It doesn't work that way. Amen. You've got to learn how to flip that thing. So I want to tell you that when we criticize one another, we're making withdrawals from one another. When I criticize you, I, I'm, I'm, I'm taking withdrawals. But on the flip side, when we appreciate one another, we're making deposits. 
If you know anything about banking, you want to make sure you got more deposits than you do withdrawals. Can I get an amen? Amen. You got to make sure you do that. So, so be careful, spouses, when you talk to one another and how you talk to one another. Be careful, church folk, when what you deal with one another. Make sure, you know, somebody said, well, what about constructive criticism? Criticism that's not asked for. Let me say it again. Advice that's not asked for always comes about, uh, around like criticism. If I didn't ask you and you tell me, then it's always going to feel like criticism. But now if I ask you, how is the preacher today? My God, Pastor, you've done so much better. You know, if, if I ask you and you tell me, I got to deal with it. I got to own it because I've asked you. You know what? That's why I figure out some of y'all, some of you men in here are so quiet. You never ask anything. That's why she's mad at you right now. Every now and then, you need to, act, you need to listen. Let, let her talk to you just a little bit. It would help a whole lot. Can I get an amen? Amen. So with, with you, whether it's with your coworkers or on the job or at school, to your teachers or wherever you are, a, a thank you, a thank you, an appreciation goes so far. Amen. That you appreciate that. And when, then as we, as we need to correct Amen. Make sure somebody's asked you first. So we realize we're making withdrawals, but let us seek the grace of God. Like Paul did in Colossians 1 when we read, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all of God's people. Listen, listen, Pastor Joseph, you come up and help me out. Listen to me. When I'm reading Paul, I think about those who left him in jail those who didn't help him at certain times. He, he, does, he very seldom will even mention that. He, he's always thanking. When I read about Jesus, he, he didn't just chew out the disciples for running off from him in the garden. He knew it was going to happen. He had an opportunity to criticize them and put them down. He didn't do it. Amen. He served them. And when you serve people, what you're doing is you're touching their heart. Amen. And, and when you appreciate people for the little things they do, oh, just the little things. And I, I know, sister, if you can just catch him doing a little, appreciate it. Because in his mind, he did a whole lot. If he found a washing machine, he did a whole lot. If he washed a dish, oh, my God, get him a plaque. He did a whole lot. Amen. Sir, if you call her saving money, appreciate her. Thank God for her. She used a coupon. Come on, Jesus. You did that? You saved us? Woman, I appreciate you. If you catch the kids getting up on their own, making their bed, <laughs> the trash I didn't have to say nothing to them I just left the trash bag on their bed <laughs> appreciate them appreciate them because if you can do that then you're going to shift something in their spirit amen what you do is you begin to take bitterness out it begins to leave you can't be this and get that you can't be unthankful and get the mores in life Psalm 92, 1, a psalm or song for the Sabbath day. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto his name, O Most High. When we come and we worship, it's a good thing to give thanks to his name. It's a good thing to sing unto him. That's why we do what we do. We don't do this because you know, we were taught this a couple of years ago in a college. We do this because the Bible teaches us to do it. Give thanks unto the Lord. Sing unto his name. See, thanks brings the mores into your life. When we are thankful, we tend to be more joyful in life. When you're thankful. When we are thankful to... Te the Bible teaches us it's better to have a morsel where there's thankfulness than a large banquet where there's bitterness. It's better to eat a Spam sandwich when you're thankful. Come on. Amen. And if you fry an egg and put on it, you got heaven. Then to have some big gourmet meal where there's bitterness. Give me the thankfulness. Can I get an amen? When we're thankful, we tend to be more friendly. When you're thankful, you, you tend to be more compassionate. 
When we're thankful, we tend to be more healthy. We tend to be more pleasant company. I don't like being around ingrates. I don't like being around people that are bitter and full of, it's, it's hard for me to deal with them. I don't get preachy, but I'm going to have to tell them the truth. You're going to contaminate other people. You're going to hurt other people. You think a, a COVID virus is bad? Get that bitter virus. You're going to puke it off everybody you talk to. You're going to send it out on an email, a text message. It's going to be in an Instagram and a Facebook post. Amen. You, we're going to have to tell Elon Musk to remove it from your Twitter. You're bitter, man. You got to get rid of that. You, you're exposing it to other people. You're going to make them sick, too. Don't like in grace. When we are thankful, we tend to be more successful in life. Amen. When you're thankful, you tend to be more effective witness for Jesus. How can you witness and not be thankful? I've never won anybody to Jesus. wonder why. When we're thankful, we tend to be more generous. We give. When we're thankful, we tend to be more focused. I'm telling you, you can't be this and get that. You can't be full of that and get what God has planned for you. I can't change you. I can only share it with you. You have to shift your own attitude. You have to realize that you're drifting. And when you do, you're heading toward bitterness. you got to grab hold of yourself and say, that ain't you, man. Amen. you got to be thankful. You ain't got to have people give you applause. If they don't give you no applause, it's all right. I was preaching to him. We were sharing with one another. And I was singing unto him. Amen. I was working under him. When I went over and helped my neighbor, I was doing it under him. The neighbor never came out and thanked me. It's all right. I was doing it under him. Amen. I'm doing it for Jesus. And if I keep doing it for him, it's going to be all right. Can I get an amen? Amen. You can't be this and get that. You can't stay bitter and be thankful. You can't stay bitter and be appreciated. Heads bowed, eyes closed. God, if they're willing, if this house is willing, to say thank you. If this house is willing to say, I need to be honest with you, God. I'm feeling bitter about some things in life. It didn't turn out the way I planned. This was not, this is not what I had written down in my journal 30 years ago. If they're willing to see you in it. If it and turn over any of the hatred and bitterness in their life, they start giving you thanks. Let me say to you as your pastor, give God thanks first. You start thanking him. David got up. He washed himself. He anointed himself. And he went to the church and gave God praise and thanks. He did that after his baby died. Hard to believe. And yet he knew the secret to keep from getting bitter. I'm not going to let this thing on me. I'll control it. Do it for your people. I pray over them right now. I extend my hand, believing from the front to the back, from the side to the side, that, God, you remove bitterness from our lives. Help us to be a thankful people, an appreciative people, a people that no longer has to get be, be performing for others. But in the name of Jesus, we serve one another. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. I don't exaggerate like I used to. Getting old will take that away from you. Amen. You know, your mind will tell you you can do certain things. But I saw a meme I laughed about. It said how old men get hurt is when they try to do things they thought they, that they did do back when they were young, like picking up stuff. You ought to watch me now. If I got Pastor Joseph, Pastor David near me, and I, something needs to be picked up, I just do this. I don't even want to get near it if I got somebody else and pick it up. Amen. Ain't no need me hurting myself. I done been down that road. I get our servant leaders to come up. Last week, you honored me on Pastor Appreciation Day. First, by being here in attendance. And I want to thank you. I, I just encourage folk that will consider me their pastor to be here. By the way, you're tithing offering envelopes on your pew. So you can start getting that ready. If you're giving on your phone, hold it up when our servant leaders go by. But last week, I decided because I asked you, 
to come here. I couldn't turn around and ask you to, as the guys wanted, to give me an offering. So, which happens each year, and I appreciate it so much. We do things with it. We do. We go to Colorado and see the grandkids and things of that nature. But so, what I found out last week is that my one of my closest friends, Pastor Kenneth, in uh, Derrida, Louisiana, his grandson, five years old, has inoperable brain cancer. He's five years old, and uh, there's no. Uh, this is a picture of him. And I ask you if you're going to give, make sure to offer. Well, I would. Even though the money was going to be my money, I'm going to send it to him, okay? And so I talked with his dad this week and let him know what we were doing. I talked with Pastor Kenneth last night let him know what we were doing. Without much fan, you know, the issue for me was no fanfare. Just this is what we're doing. So I want to thank you for $4,700 that you gave last week <laughs> to bless his family. Amen. So that, that was huge. So I, I appreciate your faithfulness in that. I'm going to send a check out with a note in it this week to Thayer, Missouri. And uh, he will be going through seven weeks of chemo and uh, radiation. To, and this, according to the doctors, just prolong his life. Uh, so whatever length he has. And I encourage the father with that thought about David that you've got to believe God for the best. And then you better prepare yourself for the verdict. Amen. When I think about preparing for the verdict, I don't care what age you are right now. You need to prepare yourself for the verdict that you will not always be in this life. Amen. And you need to make sure your family is uh, going to get what you want them to get, uh, that the church going to get what you want it to get, that people around you going to get what they want. You know, we got to be able to. <sighs> Some of you, bless your heart, you're going to have to leave all them little whatnots to somebody. You better find somebody to take your whatnots. If you don't know what a whatnot is, find somebody older than me and ask them. Amen. As we give today, we're believing God for more money, less hours, benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor and success to the kingdom. Y'all give Pastor David a hand as he comes. Give it up.